So many people set up and sign a revocable living trust and they think, yay, I'm done, let's celebrate. Well, I agree, you're done with one part, but you haven't funded the trust yet. And a lot of people don't realize a trust is really a basket. It only works if you actually put something in it. But let's be honest here, it can be a pain to fund a trust. I mean, you have to work with banks, which is no fun at all, or, or maybe where you keep your retirement accounts. Maybe you have to work with your HR person or figure out how does this beneficiary designation form work. And some people might just throw up their hands and say, ah, oh, forget it. Uh, you know, I bet it'll just work when I die, right? I've listed my stuff on the Schedule A in the back. I'm sure it's fine. But is it really fine? What happens if you don't fund your trust? In this video, I'm going to tell you all about that. Okay, so just to reiterate, first of all, a trust works when it's funded. And, and what does that mean when you fund stuff, when you put something in the trust? What does it even look like? Well, on the grant deed, you'll see that the, the name of the trust, let's say it's Deepak Chopra, who owns property by himself. He'll say, it'll say Deepak Chopra, trustee of the Chopra Family Trust. Or on his bank account, at the top left-hand corner of the account, it'll say maybe Deepak Chopra comma trustee. Or his retirement accounts will say in the beneficiary designation, you know, it'll name somebody or it might name his trust, the Chopra Family Trust. So that's what it really looks like to fund a trust. The title is correct and then it passes according to the terms of the trust. That's what we want. But let's say something happened and you weren't able to fund your trust or maybe you just didn't get around to it, something happened. Well, is, is all hope lost? Is everything just gonna go to, you know, the state of California? No, but, but let's talk about it. Okay, so first I wanna give an example of a small bank account. Let's say you have a bank account of like $20,000 and it's in, well, we're using Deepak's example. So it's in Deepak's name and it's not in the name of the trust. So when you look at the top left-hand corner of the statement, it just says Deepak Chopra owner. That's okay. But where does it go when he dies? How does the bank know where it goes? Well, we, in California, we have a special amount that you can leave to the next generation without having to put it in the trust. All right. And that amount is this year, it's $184,500. So you can add up everything that you have outside of the trust and without a beneficiary designation. And if it totals less than that, then it doesn't go through probate. But, but what does happen to it, you might ask? Well, let me show you. In California, we have something called a 13100 declaration, or it's also called an affidavit of personal property. So this is what you can fill out and give to the bank or the place where that $20,000 account is held and the bank will actually release the money. So how does that work? And by the way, I'm just giving a, an overview of this. All right, so, so you put down, you know, who died, when did they die? At least 40 days has to have gone by and there needs to be no probate opened, okay? If there's a probate opened, then this should be listed, that $20,000 account should be listed in the probate. Then you, you actually write down the account numbers of all the assets that are within that $184,500. A lot of the forms actually say $150,000. They haven't been updated yet. It was recently indexed for inflation, but for some reason, the forms haven't caught up yet. And then it says, okay, anybody who's authorized to sign this, so that could be the trustee of the trust, that could be the person who's inheriting the money, they can sign it and it has to be notarized. Hey everyone, if you liked my mom's video, like and subscribe. Then you bring that in the death certificate to the bank. And usually, if you do it correctly, the bank will, will release the money. So it's a little bit of a pain, but not horrible. Okay, now let's say you have more than $185,000, okay? Let's say you have a $500,000 checking account, or let's say you have a house that you took out of the trust to be refinanced and you forgot to put it into the trust or the title company didn't put it into the trust and you thought they did, but then you died and your, your spouse or your kids realized, uh-oh, it wasn't in the trust. What are we going to do now? So there's a few ways you can still get it into the trust. If you have a trust, but there's an asset outside the trust that you want to get it into the trust, we have a court process called a Hegstead petition. 
H-E-G-G-S-T-A-D. What a strange name, you might say. Yes, it's named after the estate of Hegstead. That was somebody's last name. And this is where a court decided we can actually do this. All right, so in that case, we actually had somebody who had taken their house out of the trust to refinance their house and then never put it back in. Well, what happened? Well, in their trust, they had listed the house on the Schedule A attached to the trust, that list in the back of the trust. Yay. And that showed that they meant to have the house in the trust. So even though it wasn't officially titled, they had never recorded a grant deed putting the house back into the trust, there was enough evidence that they wanted it in the trust that basically the court could rubber stamp it and say, yes, it's in the trust. Yay. Now, so that's really nice, but Ellen, does that mean we have to update our Schedule A all the time? Well, there was another court case more recently called the estate of Ukestad, U-K-K-E-S-T-A-D. I know, strange, crazy names, right? But in that case, they didn't have a Schedule A, but they had something called an assignment of assets, which, which we draft, it's a general assignment, assignment of property. And in that assignment, it said, I want everything to go into the trust. Well, great, okay. Then the, the court said, that's enough evidence for what we need to say that asset is now a part of the trust. So in the Hegstead petition, the attorney explains to the court, listen, judge, they meant to put it into the trust, but for some reason they couldn't. But here's the evidence, here's the schedule, or here's the general assignment. And now the property should be put in the trust and the court will, will generally allow that. So you think, okay, great, I don't have to retitle things. But let me tell you, a Hegstead petition is a pain. And it usually costs like five to $10,000 to do. And it takes a long time and you want to avoid the court system. So you'll avoid a full probate, but you still have an extra petition to do. So that's for assets above $184,500, but you have a trust and you have evidence that you wanted that asset to go into the trust. So now what about assets where you don't have a trust or there's no evidence that you wanted it to go into the trust. Maybe you named an individual as a beneficiary of an account and then that individual died and, and you never did a general assignment. You don't have a Schedule A. There's no evidence that you wanted it to go into the trust. Well, for that type of asset, you might have to go through the probate court system. And I'm not gonna go into the probate court and why I hate it, but I have a video called 10 Things I Hate About Probate. And I encourage you to go watch that video if you need to be convinced why probate is so horrible. So the moral of the story is, please fund your trust. I know at our firm, we walk you through the different types of assets and what to do with them. You need to take that time to fund the trust so you can avoid the 13100 affidavit, so you can avoid the Hegstead petition, so you can avoid the probate court process. Now, those tools are available so if it ever happens that, that they're needed, they can be accessed, but it's so much easier to just fund that trust and then everything passes smoothly to the next generation through the trust. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you'd like to see a video on actually how to fund the trust, I encourage you to go to that video and we'll see you there. Hello everyone. If you liked my mom's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all next time.